Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over the new updated image I've built for RetroPy with a track mode built in. This is version 0 0.5, um, and as the file or version name suggests, it's quite experimental, it's not to be used on a sort of stable basis, you can anticipate problems, but broadly, um, it seems pretty good, it's, it's um, holding together fine for me. And it's certainly a useful way of getting a different front end on RetroPy. Um, obviously, RetroPy ships with an emulation station, which is a perfectly good front end, but it hasn't had an awful lot of development recently. So this image gives you an alternative. And also on this image, um, version 0 0.5, I've edited or updated the emulation station front end to use a more experimental development version, which is being developed by mostly uh, a user called Jacob FK20 on the RetroPy forums. And you'll see, if you read the thread there, there's quite a lot of discussion going on about how to change things. So you'll get a bit of a different emulation station experience if you choose to use that. Anyway, this is what you'll boot into. It goes straight into this attract mode and you'll be faced with this screen. And if you use left or right on the keyboard or left or right on your joypad, it won't go anywhere because none of the systems will be pre-configured. It's up to you to put the ROMs on here and it's up to you to create the game list to make it appear. And it's up to you to sort of scrape the data or provide your own artwork. So this is where you land, and as the image shows, to start configuring it, you just hit tab on your keyboard, or um, your um, controller might be able to go straight into this if um, it's configured the same as mine. I'm using an iBuffalo USB, and I've configured that one of the shoulder buttons to bring up the um, menu, but we can see how to do that in a second. But in the main menu here, you've got the tab. The t first one's just instructions. It doesn't do anything. It's just saying press tab. Then you've got the option there to go into Emulation Station. What that would do is edit the startup file and take you to Emulations and reboot the Pi and then take you to Emulation Station. And it'll keep doing that until you choose an Emulation Station to boot back to a track mode. <clears throat> so you've got the option, you can do either there. Um, that's what that would do. And then the next option, you've got to launch Kodi. Again, you could do that from Emulation Station if you want, or you can do it from this interface. And then you've got a simple reboot. Then you've got an option here to go into the RetroPie setup script, which gives you a lot of options to tweak because effectively this image is RetroPie with um, a track mode on top. And I should mention this is a RetroPie 4.01, so it's slight increment on the version 4 final. Um, it got um, installed or updated rather about the 22nd, 23rd of August 2016. So it's uh, basically RetroPie 4 final. And the attract mode version is 2.1, which came out early June 2016. Um, but again, that got built from source um, about 22nd of August. So it's um, it's that version if you're interested in, in knowing when it got built. Then you've got shutdown option, um, obviously shut it down. And then you've purely got the version um, details there just to confirm which one you're using if you choose to use this build. Now you can build this yourself. All you do is run, and I've got three previous videos about attract mode and uh, RetroPie and all you've got to do is install RetroPie and then follow the wiki on the attract mode site for how to install attract mode on top and then it's up to you to do various configurations. So I've done some edits on this that include um, trying to minimize the amount of boot info so it's quite clean on boot so you don't see a load of text. Also I've put sort of various images um, installed so you get icons when you're scrolling through these for example or when you're scrolling through the equivalent on um, emulation station I've updated emulation station to be that sort of development version and also uh, I've installed a video manager tool to give you um, kind of a CRT effect if you use it but what I'll do for most of these settings is turn them off to start with because a lot of them anticipate a 1080p screen and if you're not using 1080p then it could be a bit of a problem. Um, so it's much easier if I just leave it as default and I'll show you how to tweak it if you want to. Anyway, so once you hit this page, hit tab on the keyboard, or I'll do it on my joypad because I've configured it. Then you get this screen up. And the first one you probably want to go to is controls to make sure they work for you. So in controls, all I've got is setting up, down, left, right, and uh, back, which is one of the buttons. And then I added down here, um, my shoulder button to create the or access the configure menu here. Um, obviously, there's a lot more you can map if you want to have a shortcut to a particular function. 
Um, but yeah, set that up. Then if we go back one here, um, the, generally you probably won't need to alter many of these settings at all, but the main options are under emulators and displays. Again, I've covered a lot of this in the previous videos, but broadly emulators is where you set the configuration of how you're going to tell a track mode to run an emulator. So if we look at an example here, uh, let's go for Mega Drive. It's just, this is a standard across all the emulators. They've all got the same criteria and you just edit the section on the right there. So basically I'm just running it through the same way RetroPie would run it. And these are the extensions of the ROMs that it would identify. And this name's just there so it knows how to scrape properly when it links to the games database. And if you've got your own imagery, you can put them in these folders, which are override the scraped imagery. Um, yeah, so what I suggest doing, you go, say, let's say, for example, you copy your Mega Drive ROMs across, go in emulators, go to Mega Drive. Then if you haven't got your own artwork, that, um, you could put in these folders. You can say scrape artwork. So I'll do that now. It doesn't take very long. I've only got about, I don't know, 20 ROMs here. So it scrapes the images for those. Then when it's done that, you can go to generate collection ROM list and this will just make a kind of like a like a lookup file so it knows what ROMs are there. So I generate that. I've already got one so I'll just overwrite it but you probably won't get that message. So it generates the ROM list. Then when it's done that, you can back out of it. Then you go in the displays menu. And in the displays menu, because we've just generated that ROM list, you'll see Sega Mega Drive appear. So it won't be there until you create that ROM list, but as soon as you do, it automatically appear. And this is where you say how you want those ROMs to be displayed in a track mode. So in here, you just say, um, right, I want the layout to be a track man, but you can select different layouts. Um, and then whichever layout you do choose, do you remember you've got layout options so you can tweak it further. It's got a lot of, um, they're all specific to that layout obviously, but you've got options to tweak it further. So that's what you have to do really. Now that I've done that, and I've also earlier, um, I did the same for main lib retro, which is why that's appearing. So now if I go to the Mega Drive, I just scrolled right. This is the layout. So it's got a marquee at the top and the snap at the right and then just the text on the left. I think that would get replaced by the wheel buttons if you had wheel buttons. But anyway, so let's go for, uh, I don't know, Adventure of Batman and Robin. Now when I run this, it's going to run in the same way that uh, it does through Emulation Station and you'll get a little run command box in the middle. Now if you're using this in a cab or, or some sort of situation where you don't really want that pop-up. It's easy to turn off. We can do that in the RetroPie menu and I'll show you that in a sec. So I press the, I've left it in because it helps you configure in the short term. So I've clicked that and you'll see, okay, run command didn't come up. Uh, let's quit that a sec. And if I go back to the menu, RetroPie setup, Configuration tools, uh, run command. Yeah, it should have come up. Okay. Let's try that again. Hmm. It was coming up earlier, okay. Maybe if I just change it and put it back. I'll check it before I put the image up anyway. Um, you can download this on the link in the description. But when it's when a game's beating, um, you can just tap a button on the controller or your keyboard and you get a, a sort of sub menu. So if I, I'll just try that anyway. If I quit that, open one again. Yeah, okay. So. If, it's just an aesthetic thing, I guess. There was a bit of a problem. I pressed the button anyway, assuming it was there, and I've got the menu popping up. So this lets you do things like, right, I don't want Pika Drive for my main emulator for Mega Drive. I can change it to Genesis. I can do that there. Um, I can also, there should be a video mode you can change there. Um, so there's a few basic uh, tweaks you can do there. But like I say, I'd probably turn this off. So if we go to uh, exit without launching. Um, 
yeah, you can turn that off where we just saw, say, on this section here, run Retroply Setup, and then just navigate to that area and you can turn it off. But uh, let's go and choose an actual game. So, um, we fire one up. That seems to show the last screen there. Um, I think on a clean reboot, because I've been mucking about with this quite a bit, it'll probably be okay, so I won't worry about that. Um, as you can see, I've got an overlay showing. Now this won't be on the image, or rather it will be on the image, but it won't be configured. And when I say image, I mean the file that you can download to burn to an SD card. So this will be turned off because this is assuming I've got a 1080p screen. So um, I'll show you where it's done and how to enable it, but when you try it, you won't get that background. So the overlay there, as well as the TV on the side, has got scan lines running across it as well and the actual game area has been resized to a particular ratio as well, so it's a bit more typical of a sort of 4-3 type ratio. Uh, anyway, yeah, so it looks like that. I prefer looking at it like this than the sort of natural raw output because it looks quite blocky on a high-def TV. But as you can see, it runs quite happily and all of the shortcut keys that work, or the hotkeys that work in RetroArch is still here because we're still in RetroArch, it's just fired from uh, um, a track mode rather than emulation station. And there you go, one, uh, one game. Okay, so hold down select, tap start, that quits out. And um, you get the idea, you scroll down here, you can everything's got image it, it will show and you can tweak your different front ends. So I did the scraping for MAME as well. It was MAME Libretro, I'm using MAME 2003 here. And uh, if you scroll the other way, or you can scroll through them, the next one is, got the arcade there. Now for this one, I've downloaded the video snap, so it's automatically playing that. You can see the marquee at the top, so it's Final Fight, so it's found that bit as well and the wheel art on the right is done as well. This is the theme called Robo Spin. So if I go and select configuration, you can see under displays, oh, if I press the right button, you can get main Retro, and up there I've got Robo Spin Beta is what I've uh, set this one to. And again, under layout options, you've got a whole host of tweaks that you can do. And then we've got Bubble Bobble, Again, you've got the marquee at the top, and Dig Dug. So I just put three together there. And then similar to how we saw on the Mega Drive 1 with the sides of the TV, this has been pre-configured so when you run a game, um, an arcade game, you get a bezel effect as well. And also curvature on the screen. So if I fire that one up, again, that won't be there. Don't worry about that. Um, there you go. So you've got the bezel on the side, you got the game in the middle, and then when the screen is showing a bit of gameplay, you'll see that the edges, um, it's got a curvature effect, so it's like it's slightly bent, like an old CRT TV. And these sort of dirt marks and reflection, obviously they're part of the image as well. But that works fine, quit out of that. Um, again, this was using main 2003, so you'll need uh, ROM set 0.78. And I'll show you how, again, this won't appear when you run it because I'll take all the configuration off because it's again, it's assuming 1080p. And I don't want that to be a default for everyone. Um, yeah, bubble bubble. Let's try that. And dead. But yeah, you get the idea. Um, so that's the arcade game. 
and you can put as many systems as you want here as long as it's configured up here you can add or remove emulators and they'll appear as long as they've got a display so you, to get the display as you saw you run the ROM list so that's a track mode and um, it's pretty much as per the other videos and um, it's just that this is a updated image and if I quit with B and I would choose actually uh, if I choose no I would choose launch emulation station there and just fire up but it'll restart the Pi and then the video capture get confused so I'll just do it manually with quitting out of this and see that's stuck on the background you can clear it obviously but Yeah, I'll, um, like I say, I sort that on the image. Anyway, so to start Emulation Station, just type Emulation Station or better off using the menu and it'll fire up into this. And the only systems that you'll see are ones that you've got ROMs for or that have files in the ROMs directory. So if you don't see some, that's why. If you do see some, that's why. And um, MAME will disappear and Mega Drive will disappear because that's I've put them there. Dreamcast and MS-DOS and ports are there because in ports I've installed Kodi, so it's there. Um, DOS has shortcuts effectively to, to the actual emulators. You can always uninstall these via the, um, the RetroPie setup as well. Uh, yeah, so in here you can see that you've got the RetroPie menu and in here we've got the standard options but then you've also got this option restarting the track mode and that will just make sure it reboots and then it always goes to a track mode so you can set that quite easily there. Um, and then separately, the tweak with this version of Emulation Station is a grid mode, which you can see here on the Sega Mega Drive. Um, it's just got a list of all the games there, and you can quite happily sort of see them quickly visually and choose what you like. And you can turn this off as well if you want. You just go Select and System UI Settings, and then instead of Grid View, just choose a different view. I think that should flip back. Uh, let's try Save and Apply. Yeah, there you go, so that just flips back. Um, and then on the grid view, you've got the option for the um, pixel. I think, is that the gap between the grids? Or maybe it's literally the size of the tiles. But yeah, you can play around with that as well. Um, you do get the odd refresh oddity now and again when it doesn't quite catch up, but you know it doesn't take a second to catch up. I think if I change that to one or yeah one, yeah there you go. Then you get a load more on the screen at once. But you can set that however you like. And uh, obviously follow the thread on the RetroPie forums, and you'll see this version develop or maybe parts will get integrated into the RetroPy version of um, Emulation Station as well. So yeah, that's available as well. And MAME, I haven't scraped this, so it's just got basic view there. And that's it. Hopefully that um, covers everything with this version. It's really the main element is that it supports RetroPy 4 or it's built on RetroPy 4. So you can see under here RetroPy, you've got the option to run the setup and um, tweak as you like. I tend to, I don't know why, but if I'm going to muck about with this, I tend to do it via emulation station rather than a track mode. Or you can even just do it from the command line. So, you know, it's available to run in lots of different ways. Or if you know what you're doing, you're quite happy knowing that you're not going to muck anything up. You could do it um, just without using a front end at all and just edit files directly. But um, yeah, that's about it. Um, anything else? If there is any questions you've got or you need any help, um, please post them on the comments on the video. But do bear in mind this this isn't a supported official release. It's not <coughs> it's not um, to be used. <coughs> excuse me. It's not to be used thinking that it's going to be flawless. If you want a nice stable platform for um, RetroPie, use the official RetroPie release. But if you want to play about with different front ends and see how they work, then give it a go. Thanks for watching. Actually, one more bit that I was supposed to show is how to get that uh, CRT effect. So like I say, when you put your ROMs across and start playing the games, there won't be any sort of manipulation on that. And you can do that uh, in a couple of ways. One quick and easy way 
is to use the Retropy setup and if you go in there you'll see under configuration tools there's config edit option if you go in there you can say right I want to configure basic libretro emulator options and let's say you want to put the effect on master system choose master system and you can say I want uh, shaders to be enabled true and the shader I'm going to choose I'd reckon I mean you can try these different ones and see how they look but I'd recommend this one CRT by and that's it then when you play the game it will be uh, a little more um, I guess it'll have that retro look that scan line so that's a quick and easy way of doing it per system you can just change it in there um, separately I'll just put that back Okay, um, separately, if we quit out of that and quit out of this, to get that uh, look where you've got the TV overlays or the arcade bezel overlays, um, there's a mini sort of tool I've put on here. And again, it kind of fits in quite well with the whole experimental image here because um, there are some issues with it. If you use it in certain ways still, I need to rewrite certain parts of it but basically it, it quite happily copies across data and um, it will overwrite your system based retroarch.cfg files if you're just writing this image for the first time you know it doesn't really matter but if you're trying to do this on a system that um, you care about then be wary but anyway to get to it just change directory to home so it's cd and then the tilde like that then we're in the home directory and in that directory we want to go into that RP Video Manager tool. So in that folder, you can then run the tool, which is uh, full stop forward slash video manager sh. <coughs> then if you press enter there, you get a couple of options. So the ones we're interested in are, again, because you can see here, you've got options for 1080p, 720p. I didn't want to preset some options because no doubt it would uh, muck about with other people's um, display. So I've turned this off, but you can go in here to turn it back on. So I've got 1080p, so I'll choose option three. And I'm interested in the arcade bezels, number eight. And there, it's applied those arcade bezels. Um, there's only about 200 or so that I've done, 220, something like that. Um, so it's not a complete set, but you can see if you go into the ROM directory for main Libretto, you'll see all the, the ones that are supported. And that's all there is to it. And then if you decide you don't like it, you can turn it off by going back um, nine, quit, and go config menu one. Then number five, remove all arcade bezel. Done, so now that's removed. And um, the other option we saw on Mega Drive there was where um, you had the TV on the side. So if you go to quit out of that one, six, and overlays three, and then that would just be option number one there it would just apply all of the um, bezels to about five or six systems so feel free to play around with that and um, if you do want to see where it edits largely it's just going to be in this one area so I'll show you now uh, if I quit out of that and quit out of that and then we change to apt retropy configs mega drive for example and um, then edit the retroarch file here so nano space retroarch.cfg and you can see here the tools put in these lines it's specified how big my screen is and how big the output from the game should be also where it should appear on the screen and um, there's the image that's referencing or rather that config file there references an image um, and so on so all of those lines there are custom to make it look like that the bottom ones here these three are the original ones that you would have normally. So if you deleted these top lines, it would go back to normal. So you can tweak it manually as well, obviously. Um, and that's it. So have fun with the image and yeah, any questions, put it in the description. Thanks very much.